أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Beloved viewers, you are welcome to another episode of our program Quran Made Easy, reaching you from MTA Africa. Today we'll be looking at another very important aspect of Quranic recitation, which is elongation, al-mudud. In Arabic language or in Quran, there are some signs of elongation. There are some words, there are some letters that necessitate elongation. And that is what we shall be discussing today. And what do we mean by elongation? You retaining the sound, stretching a sound beyond the ordinary. That is elongation, known as al-mudud or al-maddu. There are some letters that necessitate this. Basically, there are three. The first is alif. The second is letter wa. And the third is letter ya. But these three letters themselves alone cannot necessitate madu except when they are preceded uh, by what is necessary. For instance, alif should be preceded by a letter carrying fatha. So it means alif on its own cannot necessitate elongation. If you have alif alone and there is no letter before it carrying fatha, then there will be no elongation. Wow must be preceded by a letter carrying dhamma before we can have elongation. Ya must be preceded by a letter carrying kesra before elongation can occur. So when we have all these conditions fulfilled, then there will be elongation. Again, alif preceded by fatha, ya preceded by kesra, and wow preceded by dhamma. That's the first thing we have to note. These three letters themselves, the alif, wa, and ya, they must take sukun. Whether the sukun is written or it is not written. If it is not written, it is assumed that you should know. So it is carrying sukun. So if these three letters are carrying sukun and they are preceded by you know, the appropriate um, vowels that you have mentioned, then there would be an elongation. Otherwise, there will be none. Let's say letter wa is carrying fatha and it is preceded by a letter carrying dhamma then there will be no elongation. Of course, we have letter of Dhamma, then we have wow after it. But because the wow is not carrying Sukun, there will be no elongation. So again, we must have Alif that will have Sukun, that will be silent, and preceded by a letter carrying Fatha. We must have wow carrying Sukun, preceded by a letter carrying Dhamma. We must have Ya, carrying sukun, preceded by a letter carrying kesra. So these conditions must be fulfilled before we can have an elongation. In some cases, the alif will take sukun. If the sukun is you know, written on the alif, then that might not be a sign of elongation because the alif ordinarily should be vacant. That is, there should be nothing on that alif. Like, let's say we have ya fatya ya, then we now have the alif. Just to elongate it, we can have ya. But when the sukun is put on it, then it becomes ya. But in Arabic, when the sukun is written on it, we don't call it alif again. That is no more alif, that is hamza. That is hamza. Alif ordinarily does not take anything. So when you see a sign on it, then that is hamza. Like fatha, like kesra, like dhamma. It is no more alif, it is hamza. So alif is only meant for elongation of what comes before it. So we should take note of that. So when we have all these conditions, then we will have elongation. So elongation can also be divided into two major parts. The first one is the natural one, the fundamental one, known as al madul asli, fundamental one. That is, it is not caused by any sabab, by any reason. 
it is very there. It is fundamental to the word. Like saying, call and now is said. We are elongating that curve, not because there is a particular reason attached to it. No. It is fundamental to it. It is natural. So kola, that is modu asli, a fundamental elongation. That's the first category. The second category is al modul fari, non-fundamental ones. When the elongation is brought about by a particular reason, by a particular suburb, which we shall be explaining um, in the course of our discussion. So these are the two major classes of mud, the two major classes of elongation that we have in the Quran. That of fundamental is very clear, like kala, yakulu, no, so, numerous, there are so many of them in the Quran. But that of non-fundamental one has so many subtypes that we have to look at. And that will be our focus. The first that we shall be talking about, the original maddu, the fundamental maddu, the model asli, is just is meant to be elongated just twice. That, mean, that means two harakats, like two seconds. Like I've said previously, you can just count by you know, using your fingers, like iyaka, iya, iya, not iya kanabudu. When you recite as iya kanabudu, that is wrong. It is meant to be just two, because that elongation is natural. It, it is not caused by an external suburb. So iyaka, iyaka, kola, not kola, no. Kola, iyaka, yakulu. So that's the first thing. Then under the non-fundamental mud, the non-fundamental elongation, the first one is what is known as al-maddul wajib al-muttasil. Al-madd al-wajib al-muttasil. Wajib means compulsory. Muttasil means connected. What do we mean by maddul wajib al-muttasil? This is when we have the, letter, the alphabet of mud, alphabet of elongation, either alif, waw, or ya. Then after that, we, ha we now have hamza. We have hamza immediately after the letter of mud. So both the letter of mud and the hamza are now in a single word, not two different words. In a single word, then we'll have maddul wajib al mutasil. Now, going back to the nomenclature, wajib, you said it is compulsory. That means you have to observe it. Then, mutasil means connected. What do we mean by connected here? It means both the letter of mud and the amza, they are connected in a single word. They are joined in a single word. That is how the word mutasil, connected, you know, came about. What is the length of this elongation? The length of this elongation is six. The length is six. Again, we must have these two conditions in a single word. Letter of mud and amza immediately after it. Let's see some examples. Was <laughs> Wasamai, mai. So it has to be six elongated, no six, uh, six seconds for the length. So that is model wajib. When you look at the word asama, that is evun. So we have the letter of elongation, which is alif, preceded by sin, carrying fatha. Wasam, uh, sorry, preceded by mim, carrying fatha. Sama, mim fatha ma. Then we now have alif mud. So that means the two conditions for the elongation is made there. For the elongation of wajib, we must have amza immediately after that. And both of them should be in the same word. So the word sama is a single word. So sama is not a word, and e is a separate word, no. Sama is a single word. So we now have the amza and the letter of mud in that single word. That means we have fulfilled all the conditions for modul wajib al mutasil the compulsory modul that combines letter of mud and amza. And that is why we have elongated this six times.
Wasamai Wa malaika tuhu Malaika Malaika When we look at malaika too La We have lam Karim fatha Then we have alif To elongate it Then we now have immediately after that After that alif We have Amza. So that's why I say Malaika. Malaika. In Surah Al Baqarah, Ulaika ala hudam mir rabbihim. Ulaika. All the conditions are fulfilled here. We have Letter of mud, which is alif. We have amza, which is e. Then we can observe madul wajibul muttasil. Ulaika ala huda min rabbihim. There are so many other examples in the Quran. These are examples of al madul wajib al muttasil. But just like you must have observed, all the examples we have given, they are alif. That is, the letter of mud there is alif. We can also have some whose letter of mud would be ya or wa. Like the verse that says, Waji ayawma idin bi jahannam. Waji a. Ji a. Six. So here we have jim kesra. We have ya. Being the letter of mud, then after that we have Amza. G A. So that means we have fulfilled all the conditions for module wajib. Then we have to observe it. So when the conditions are fulfilled, then the word wajib has to be manifested. That is, it has to be compulsory. Also, ma kunna na amalu min su. The word su i. Su. So we have. Sin sukun, sorry, sin dhamma, we have wow sukun. Being the letter of mud, then we have amza. Su, su, i, su, i. So these are some examples of al madul wajib, al mutasil in the Quran. There are so many other examples. The next one that we'll be looking at is al madul jaiz. Al Munfasil. Jaiz means permissible. Munfasil means separated or dissociated. That means the letter of mud and the amza, they will be in two separate words. The first word will end with the letter of mud. The next word will commence with amza. So when we have that, then the mud is permissible. It is permissible. And the length of this mud is according to the pace of your recitation. It can be two, it can be four, it can be five. It can be two, it can be four, it can be five. Like the word, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu Oh, ya ayyuhan nas. The word ya is a word on its own. Ya is a word. Ayyuha is another word. So I said the first word will end with the letter, letter of mud, which is ya. Ya. Ending with alif, mud. Ya. Then we have ayyuha. Ayyuha is starting with amza karim fatha. So they are not in the same word, but two words. This one ends with the letter of mud, and the other one starts with amza. So when we have that, then what we have is al madul jaiz al mufassil. So it is jaiz, it is permissible. Why the word jaiz is given to it is because it is not like wajib. That is compulsory. And that is why here we said it, it can be two, just like the natural mud do. That is, you, ca you can stretch it twice, you can elongate it four, four times or five times. Not like 
al-madul wajib, which is compulsory. And when you look at that of wajib, you can see that there is no option of two there. No option of two. But here we have the option of two. And that two will make it look like a natural mud. So that is why it is named ja is permissible. Then munfasil because it is detached. Not in the same word, but in two different words. So we have to understand that. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. And you can make it just twice. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. It is still correct. So it depends on the pace. Your pace when you, when you are reciting the Quran. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ أو بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ So you can make it two, four, or five. That is Al-Maddul Jaiz Al-Munfasil. So thank you for watching. This is how far you can go today. As for your questions and inquiries, you can please send them to Africa at mta.tv. Africa at mta.tv. We hope to meet you in our next episode. Till then, we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.